What is up y'all? Dan back at you with another video. Today's video is going to be that 10 legendary onslaught tips to help you get your clears. Now a lot of people seem to be struggling with what to do, when to do, what to bring in, and how to optimize or prepare for certain ways of enemies. And I wanted to give you 10 tips that I think will be incredibly beneficial for you and your team moving forward so you can start getting more consistent clears of Legend Onslaught. Now I also pulled and polled from my Twitch stream and from my Twitter. So I'm going to use some of those as well because I think my community has some really good ones that I will add. The first tip I wanna give is play your life. A lot of people unfortunately do not understand how to play your life. There is a playstyle called aggressive defensive playstyles where you know you learn not to overextend you sometimes burn your heavy and playing your life means being able to kill stuff as they spawn not letting them you know pull in the more you play legend onslaught the more you get accustomed to where the enemies are going to spawn use your map use your supers use your heavy because remember every four to five waves you're going to have a bonus objective that you can get more heavy learn to chain supers with your allies you know, pop that well, then pop that tether, then pop that burning mall. The supers you and your fire team are using, it just makes things a lot easier and a lot cleaner when the team is working together and playing their life together. Now, a bad way of doing this is just playing very passive and defensive. You can do that, but you still need to be able to, to play aggressively while killing things. For the next tip, this is a bit different, but I think everyone can do this and that is bringing a disorienting grenade launcher. One thing I don't see a lot of players running in this activity are disorienting grenade launchers, or as we just call them, blinding GLs. I would say about 95% of all enemies in this activity, whether it is Fallen or Hive, can be blinded. You have Partner Dust, Empty Vessel, Ignition code, truth teller, you name it, you have one probably in your vault. You have a couple you can probably craft, put on a grenade launcher with disorienting grenades. If you are struggling getting this done and enemies are overwhelming you and your teammates just can't kill the stuff fast enough, have one of them or all of them put on a disorienting grenade launcher. I don't really want to give a lot of suggestions as far as weapon loadouts and stuff because I believe you can do this with anything. But this is the one weapon I would highly recommend. It can be the difference between your team killing everything or getting overran. With that, you can blind stuff, you can tether them, and then just go to town with all of your supers. This is really good for when you have to cap the mines or cap the plates with the ogres on them. You can blind them over and over so you don't have to worry about them. This unfortunately doesn't work on the Briggs so you gotta just do whatever you got to to kill that stuff. But a disoriented grenade launcher is huge for getting this clear. And I don't understand why I don't see more people using them. My next tip is team composition. When I talk about team composition, that means before you load into Onslaught, hover over each character, talk with your teammates of what you're planning on running and thinking out how you're going to make that work with each player. So one person bring in say Pyro Gale, bring someone that can just stun everything, you know, like a tether. Bring someone that's gonna do something like freeze everything like Ozzyomancy or Stasis Hunter. Something that will allow each player to play their build to the best of their capabilities. A lot of times I'll see people just running three builds that don't really synergize well and while you can possibly do that, if you are struggling, it is okay to reconvene with your teammate in orbit, talk about what you're doing and what you can do better. The build that I always suggest for team comp is always like a well, a tether, and of course, just an offensive build. You can either have like a strand titan, a power gale titan, just something that allows each build to synergize into the next build. Our next tip is going to be a very simple one that people will always be able to do, and that is saving scraps for later rounds. 
even though you can get scraps starting at wave one, you don't really need to, you know, use your scrap on wave one to build stuff, build anything. Saving that for like wave 20 and beyond is very beneficial. The reason being is as you are teleporting to each location, your chances of spawning in that location, from what my experience is, is dictated based off of how many augments or how many turrets or decoys or tripwires, how many things are built in that location. So the longer you wait, the more consistent your spawns of each location will be. So when you get to the big wave, the final 10 waves, the final 20 waves, you have a lot of scrap and a lot of money to really build up your fortifications when you really need it. When I'm doing my double carriers on stream, my rule of thumb is saving your scrap until wave 30. Now you will have a couple waves around wave 23 to 28 that can be a little bit of a struggle, but this is when my last tip really goes into like effect, you know, building into a build that builds into your next player's build that builds into the third player's build. So those waves become even easier. Once you get to wave 30, you want to start purchasing things because by the time you're at wave 30, you only have to stay at that location for 10 waves. And then the final location are the final 10 waves. So at this point for wave 30 to 40, you buy everything you can while staying above 10,000 scrap. That way, when you get to the last location, you still have enough money to purchase a bunch of stuff in the final waves as well. My next tip is one that some people may not like, but I think is very beneficial to you as a player. And that is if you're struggling in legend, that's okay. But so you and your fire team should go into normal. What I mean by that is go into normal and get practice with normal wave 50. The only difference in normal and legend is the difficulty. So using normal as a foundation can be very helpful because you can practice your strategies. You can practice, you can practice learning where the spawn locations will be of all the enemies. And you can learn, you know, you and your team's build composition as well. Once you get really comfortable knowing, okay, at this wave, this might happen, this might happen, this might happen. You'll be well more prepared and better informed for legend. It can be kind of tough knowing what to expect in the forties and thirties. If you have not been able to get there yet. So don't be afraid to go to normal get a lot of practice with your build and how you're playing with your team and what triggers what waves on all the maps. And once you feel really comfortable, just go to legend and slay out. There's not much difference at all. Guarantee doing some normals just for a bit, just to see what you should be expecting, say from falling at wave 35, 36, 37, or, you know, hive and also learning what bosses and what bonus objectives are happening can be very, very beneficial for your legend runs. So you know what to expect and you don't get overran. My next tip, and this is one of the ones that I think everyone should do no matter your experience. And that is learn to not fight on the ADU. When enemies spawn, when the bosses spawn, when tormentors spawn, they prioritize you first and then the ADU. And then, you know, decoys and turrets and everything else. I understand when you're taking damage, you want to go hide near the ADU and all that stuff. But that is the last thing you should do. You have to defend the ADU, obviously, but it takes damage. So if you're running near the ADU and they are shooting you, they are obviously going to possibly miss some hits on you, which means they're going to shoot the ADU which of course is going to lessen the health of the ADU. So you gotta stop. What I like to tell my team to do whenever I'm doing double carries, I like to tell people to, if you see enemies coming towards you, you want to guide them or kite them or move them away from the ADU. They're gonna rush you, they're gonna chase you, that's fine. But if you chase them into the ADU, that's doing more harm than good. I would rather you lead them away from the ADU and die than lead them to the ADU and die. Because then once you're dead, they are obviously near the ADU, so they're gonna start aggroing the ADU as well. 
So please, just learn to fight away from the ADU. When the Tormentor shows up, learn to fight away from the ADU. This is probably the most beneficial one. If you are struggling or if you are dying to the ADU wiping you, learn to use supers that will move them away from the ADU, you know, well, well away from the ADU, tether away from the ADU, you know, anything to make the aggro away from the ADU. We have to keep that thing alive as long as possible. And if you are uh, forcing or like allowing them to damage you near it, or you're just trying to use it as like positioning and cover, then you're doing more harm than good. Move away from the ADU, keep eyes on the ADU, but do not fight near the ADU. My next tip is a simple one, and that is learning how to abuse the wave timer. What I mean by that is whenever you're at a wave, you see, of course, the gray bar that fills up as you kill enemies. Learn when that wave is done. Learn how to abuse it. What I like to tell people to do is when I see that bar almost done, I like to leave one or two enemies up and then run around. Grab, hand, uh, grab heavy, grab super orbs, anything that I need to do before we kill the last wave of enemies. Now, if you leave one or two enemies up and let, leave them in the ADU, that's fine for a few seconds. They're not going to kill it. If you have a blinding jail, you can of course blind them. That'll slow them down. But pay attention to the waves timer. And once you see it starting to fill up, you know, just keep up with your team and let them know, hey, I'm going to go get some heavy. I'm gonna go look for some orbs, some special. Don't kill the last couple of enemies. And they say, okay, I got you. Or vice versa. Hey guys, we're about to be done with the wave. Let's wait on this last enemy. And let's, you know, mentally prepare for the next wave. What wave are we at? Are we about to have a boss wave? Are we about to have a bonus objective? Are we about to have a uh, mini boss wave? Knowing what's about to happen lets you know how to prepare better. A good rule of thumb is every time you have a bonus objective pop up, you want to do it, of course, but a bonus objective is popping up simply because you're about to have a boss wave. So what I like to tell my team to do whenever there's a bonus objective, I stop damaging when there's just a little bit of wave left. I had them go grab their heavy. Go pick up any orbs, reload everything, be ready, because we possibly have a boss wave coming up. So you're not, you know, scared. So you're not like, oh, surprise, because a tormentor just showed up. You know, a bonus objective means a boss wave is coming up after. So I learned to abuse the wave point to your benefit. So everyone is prepared. You know, I got myself reloaded. Okay, I know where I'm going to place my well. It's very crucial and helpful. Our next tip goes just in line with the previous one and as learning how to control points and choke points. What I mean by that is every wave on every map has two spawns of pretty much all the enemies. A couple locations have three and learning where to place your wells, your supers, how to like lock down an area is super beneficial and can be the difference between a clear or not. This also goes into the same uh, tip earlier, where it's learning how to chain supers. You can't really chain supers efficiently if you don't know when to place your well, when to thunder crash, when to tether, when to do all that stuff. So, of course, you can go into normal, spend some time learning where best to you know place your tether, place your well, and also knowing where enemies are going to spawn can be very helpful because you know they're going to spawn. You can kill them. Learning to control points and learning how to create choke points is really, really helpful. So as always, if you don't know where they are, feel free to do more runs on normal, hop in with your team on normal, and take practice of knowing where enemies are gonna be. My next tip is going to be probably one of my best tips, and that is, as my chat wanted to call it, trust in shacks. As you know, Lord Shax is a decoy. If you level him all the way up, get Shax in golden form, and he tanks a lot of damage. Now, like I said earlier, enemies prioritize the Guardian, the ADU, and then the decoys, and then the turrets in that order, as like, I guess the highest value of threat, of course. So with Shax, as long as you are not closer, 
and as long as of course he's closer to the enemies in ADUs as long as you are not closer to the enemies all the enemies will prioritize shacks and this is huge for the tormentor wave this is huge for any of the demolitionist waves for the ogre wave for everything and as long as you have a shacks up you can simply just get free damage on your tormentor and any other bosses that come up and even a lot of the waves they will prioritize as well shacks is huge there's a chance that shacks will possibly get nerfed after reset but if they don't shacks is still gonna be beneficial i believe and of course if shacks does die you can do the little ball trick to heal him they may pass that as well but even if they pass that remember you have two or three decoys so you can have multiple shacks at each location and it is very very nice for the tormentor and it's very nice for a lot of the waves at around 35 plus this is one reason why we save all of our scraps and that is simply for being able to build up shacks maximum level as many as we can for those last 15 waves our final and best tip that works for every single person that does legend onslaught is communication with your team. It might sound simple, but you would be surprised how many people, even in a you know team oriented environment, simply don't communicate with their teammates and using communication can be the difference between a clear and a wipe. What I mean by communication isn't just, you know, talking with your team and conversing. It is, you know, talking about what strategy you're about to do, talking about what the wave is about to do. All the tips I've already given all come down to communication. A lot of times I over communicate. I tell people, hey, can we get a tether here? Save your well, our well first. Uh, you know, I need some heavy. Don't kill that guy, of course communicating with enemies hey enemies got behind us one enemy on the adu learning to keep your head on a swivel and communicating efficiently with your team is crucial this is pretty much an activity that you can solo because it's already been soloed but you have to communicate with your team you cannot play as if you are a solo player everything comes down to communication the better you and your team's communication is it can make up for a lot of skill. It can make up for a lot of bills and it can make up for a lot of things. As long as you communicate with your team, you and your team can do anything. Now, I know you were probably surprised that that might have been my number one tip, but whenever I see people fail, including myself and my team, because I fail a lot in these, I've also won a lot. And a lot of the times a wipe happens because I didn't communicate efficiently to my team. Sometimes I will say something and I know what I mean in my head, but then we die and they were like, well, you said this. And I was like, no, I meant exactly that. You know, I'm not going to blame my teammates. I didn't communicate efficiently. Learning to communicate with your team is crucial. Being clear and concise is also very beneficial. So if you are not communicating with your team, if you're not playing as a team and calling out things, Call out when the enemy is behind you. Call out when the torment responds. Call out when the you know bonus objective is here. Tell your teammates, don't kill everything. Let's let's get this bonus objective. We need this heavy. Things like that. Communicate with your team. If you take all these tips and apply them to you and your fire team's onslaught runs, I am very confident you'll get more consistent clears and deeper runs in the waves. Hopefully these tips helped you. If there's any that I missed that you think is super beneficial, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'm always willing to listen. Hopefully what I give you helps. Hopefully what you give other people help as well. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.